Welcome back to another episode of It's In The Details. As always, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment, wherever you get the show. Um, Y'all, there has been a lot going on on TV these past couple weeks. Now, I brought up a couple fall shows that were coming that were on on my radar. Uh, One was Dr. Death which I have been watching, which I'm sure you've heard about, and the other one was La Brea, which I was not going to watch. Um, La Brea, though, has not left my mind because the commercials have been everywhere. And I got to say, La Brea looks like Lost 2021. I don't know how many of you watch Lost. I watched it long after it was done. Uh, it was a fun ride for most of it. Then it got a little weird, got a little weird in the last couple seasons, but whatever. But it was, it was fun. It was mostly fun. La Brea, the commercials I'm seeing, uh, poison, poisonous jungles, anacondas, just people just dead in the forest with red veins popping out. No one knows why people are just staring at these people. So I don't, it could be the perfect kind of dumb, fun TV, mindless nonsense that you could love, or it could just be a terrible waste of time that's only going to last one season. I don't know. I don't know. But if you know, hop in the comments, let a brother know how you are enjoying La Brea. Did you start La Brea? Did you stop La Brea? Whatever. Let me know, okay? Dr. Death, though. Dr. Death. Oh, boy. Um, so first of all, let's start here. I've been saving up some Dr. Death episodes, okay? There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of stuff I'm watching. So occasionally, I will set aside a show, let a couple episodes build up, just so you can get a little mini binge. Get a a mini binge in so you can enjoy a couple uh, episodes and the storyline can progress all at once, right? It's tough. Tough when you're not streaming. That's the thing. When it's not a streaming show and they don't just give it to you all at once, sometimes you got to ration, right? And I rationed a couple of episodes of Dr. Death. And boy, oh boy, could I have not picked a better time to ration. So I've got two episodes saved. I'm watching the first one, and the first one ends in a completely crazy cliffhanger. But guess who that doesn't bother? Guess who doesn't have to wait a week to find out what happens at the end of that cliffhanger? This guy. This guy doesn't have to wait because he's got another one saved. And we get right into it, and it's crazier than the last one. Okay? Just absolutely crazy. It's good. It's a good, solid episode. They're building new characters. These are people. They're real people. But they're building these new characters and storylines. And I love it. So let me see what I can tell you without spoilers. There is a wonderful relationship they're developing between the assistant DA and the DA. Okay? You can see a real mentorship happening between the DA and and the assistant DA. The assistant DA has been in the the office longer. um, So she kind of knows her way around. But the, the DA clearly cares about this person. I think he actually called her a, a mentee. He said he referred to himself as a mentor. Okay. Uh, the show is based on a true story. So I don't know if what happened between the mentor and mentee is real. Right. I don't know if it's real. I don't know if they fabricated it for the storyline. But if it is real. If that DA talked to the assistant DA in that manner and she dealt with him in the manner she dealt with him in the show. Oh, man. Heartwarming. Heartwarming. Just all the, the, the trials and tribulations that surrounded them and the things that she wanted to do with this case. And they found a little bit of friendship, respect, professionalism in there, and some real caring. I like it. I like it. The show is the show is pretty good. Um, 
they did in the two episode arc I just watched somewhere in the middle. I think they're like six and seven, five and six, whatever. In this little two episode arc, they gave us the first glimpse, the first tiniest little glimpse of Christopher Dunch being a real person, like being a person who might care about people, being a person who uh, is, you can see the charm. You can see, like, you can see the charm, and it's not smarmy. It's not like, it's not like he's trying to get something over on people, which he does a lot. But you, can, they give you a glimpse of this, like, real guy and why people get drawn to him. And then they take that shit away. They, t- <laughs> they, t- <laughs> they step on that, and they go, "Don't forget who this guy really is." Okay, do not forget who this guy really is. And they shove it down your throat. Okay, he's awful. He's terrible. Like, we knew he was terrible, but like, really, really terrible. Um, There's a letter. He writes a letter to a person he works with. And I, I, I have to assume this letter becomes evidence, right? So I, I have to assume you could go find this letter, right? You should be able to Google. I didn't, I didn't Google it because I watched it, right? But I have to assume you could go find this letter. Y'all, go, even if you're not watching this show, okay? You know he's a doctor. You know uh, he's a real bad person. You know he's hurting people and killing people. Just go read this letter. It's not gonna give you nightmares. It's not, it's just... This man is operating on people. Like, while he wrote this letter, he was still operating on people. Okay? You gotta go read this letter. It's completely crazy. And boy, oh boy, Joshua Jackson. I've always liked Joshua Jackson's acting. Uh, I don't know that I ever really... uh, accepted the range like I liked the things he was doing obviously you know I like him from Dawson's Creek um he was Charlie Conway in the Mighty Ducks franchise the originals um I also watched a little show called Fringe uh I think it lasted three or four seasons it was a sci-fi show he was in it uh he really he really doesn't stand out for me in that show. When I think about it, I think about the female lead and there was an older gentleman in, in French. And I really think about them more. And there was a tall black guy. And I really think about them more than I think about him being in the show, but that's no shade to him. Maybe the rest of the people were stronger, right? But Joshua Jackson in Dr. Death delivers a 30 second, 25 second performance where things start going bad. Things start going real bad. He gets back to his parents' house. They're having dinner. And when I say bad, I mean bad. Things are, things are getting bad in these streets for him. Okay, so he's back with his parents. And he delivers the saddest man I've ever seen in my whole life. Minus tears and, and slob, all, all the stuff. You know when someone's blubbering, they're really, they're distraught. He's not distraught. He's sad. He's overwhelmed. They, they, he's sitting in a chair at dinner with his parents. If you're watching the show, they've got an up and down relationship. And he's just got this sour look on his face. His neck is shrinking down into his shoulder. His shoulders are up around his ears. He just looks like there's an elephant sitting on him. <laughs> And he is so sad. So sad. It is hilarious. (laughs) Hilarious. Uh, His parents won't even let him get to the dinner. They got to say grace first. (laughs) And that's nothing against people saying grace to eat dinner. Okay. It's just like. Y'all know what I'm going through, okay? I want to eat this meal and move on with my life. 
<laughs> and they refuse to let him. And it is poetry in motion on the screen. Like, it's almost, I don't know if you could get to that point without watching the rest of the series, but it's almost worth watching just to see how sad he gets in this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing through all the words, y'all, but it, it cracked me up. It cracked me up. It's it's a it's a, a outrageous performance by him. It's so good. I've never seen anybody that sad in my whole life. I've seen a lot of sad people in person and on TV. I've never seen anybody sadder. Oh, Joshua Jackson doing it, boy. WNBA basketball. Last week I said the WNBA finals had started. Right, we, we were leaning into uh, game two when I did this last episode. Uh, since then, the WNBA Finals have finished. The Chicago Sky are the N- WNBA champions. And there's a lot of stories. There's so many good stories. First of all, before we get to the stories, the basketball was phenomenal. I said after game one, these ladies in the playoffs were balling. Balling out, right? Kalia Copper. I mentioned her name. She came through. Miss Vandersloot, she did it again, too, putting up some crazy double-doubles. High assists, 15, 15 assists, I think, in the in game four. Candace Parker had that Kobe Bryant look in her eye for the last two games. Um, but, wow. Okay? The basketball was outrageous. The controversy, there was some controversy. They, some of the girls got into, some of these women got into some scraps. Now, they, nobody was throwing any hands, but they were, there was a lot of jaw jacking. Okay? Uh, refs got involved. Diana Taurasi pushed a ref to go pick up one of her teammates. Pushed a ref. Okay? In the rule book, that means fine plus immediate suspension. She got fined $2,500. Don't mix that up with the fines you heard in the NBA. They make a lot more money. So $2,500, no suspension. I don't, I haven't heard anybody give a good explanation as to why she was not suspended, but uh, they got crushed that game that she played when she shouldn't have been playing anyway. So I guess it balanced out. Um, Brittany Griner. Six foot eight. She threw down a dunk in game one. I think it was the first dunk in the WNBA finals. Um, Chicago Sky has uh, a wife wife team. They got Courtney Vandersloot and Miss Quigley um, are married. And I can't imagine what it would be like to win a professional championship with your wife or husband whatever however however it goes in these leagues we're probably pretty far away from a couple of men husband husband situation winning a super bowl or nba championship or 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 a world series championship probably we're probably quite a ways away from that happening but women's soccer wnba that can happen and it happened this week so that was a great story uh, back to Candace Parker. Candace Parker was with the Los Angeles Sparks for her whole career. Contract was up. She decided to go home to Chicago and help Chicago win their first WNBA championship. So it was amazing. I hope you watched it. If you didn't, you got to start watching next year because the WNBA, I'm saying it now. I'm not hot take guy. I'm not, I want to get to this thing first guy, but the WNBA It's going to blow up. It's going to blow up. Inside of my lifetime, we are going to see these WNBA teams playing in filled arenas in NBA-sized arenas. That's going to happen. There's no questions for me. Um, It's just too huge. Chicago played in sold-out arenas through this run. Um, Attendance was pretty good. Like, it's, it's a decent amount of people going to these games. And listen, uh, WNBA, I know I'm nobody, right? But if you want your league to truly blow up 
the way I believe it can, and I think you think it can too, get Toronto a WNBA team. Make that happen. I'm not sure where they're going to play. I'm not... Rico, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what stadium they're going to play in until they can play in the ACC. But Canada, Toronto specifically, but all of Canada, basketball crazy. We're nuts up here. It's crazy for basketball. Okay? It's outrageous. Ticket prices are soaring. I can't even imagine what they look like after the pandemic. But we want basketball. And the, the quality of the WNBA right now, that's going to do big things up here for sure. So look for it. The WNBA is going to start exploding. Make sure you're on board if you love basketball. And let's just, just, let's just start talking about a Toronto WNBA team. Let's just start talking about it. I'm sure some other people are already. But let's just, just tell a friend. Hey, man, have you been watching any WNBA games? Maybe Toronto should get a team. Wouldn't it be great if Toronto would get a team? What would they be called? Let's just start brainstorming, okay? Let's just get it out there and see if this can happen because the city will love it. Okay, so I've been doing this show about seven months now. I've gone seven months, I've been talking about TV, I've been talking about movies this whole time, and somehow I have not talked about what I, is probably my favorite show. Like, for real, my favorite show, uh, Succession. I don't know if you've, I don't know if anybody's watching Succession. Anybody I've ever heard talk about Succession talks about it being one of the best shows they've ever seen, Okay. Succession is a show based on, I believe it's loosely based on the Murdoch family. So you've got a media conglomerate family. The man who runs the show is getting older, obviously, as we all do. And he's got a bunch of kids. And he's got to decide what the succession plan is. Who's going to step in? Who's going to take on the company when he's done? And typically those things don't go very smooth. You've got a bunch of people who've never uh, had to work for all the stuff they have because dad did it, mom did it, whoever it was, they did it first, and you came along rich, and you you were just riding coattails. I'm sure these people have gone to school. I'm sure they're smart people to a certain degree, but they're not the first generation, right? They're the second generation trying to to get, get in the riches, trying to get the power, right? This show, I've seen Will Ferrell's name attached to it. I've seen Adam McKay's name attached to it. Neither of them are in the show, but they've also done things like uh, Southbound Southbound and Down. I think it's Southbound and Down. Uh, The Righteous Gemstones, Vice Principals. Like they've they've got their hands in these comedy dramas, the dramedies, if you will. Um, Succession's Succession's the best one. It's the best one. There have been two seasons of Succession. I believe the last one aired in 2019. So the third season just started this week. Episode one. Now when I tell you this is my favorite show, I've watched the first two seasons of Succession three times already. Okay? Three times. Do some math. Quickly, show started 2018. I think the second show ended, second season ended in 2019, and I've watched both of them three times now. Okay, it's 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 tremendous. It's a great great show. Uh, dry, hilarious, menacing, betrayal. It's got everything. It's got everything. The comedy is so hilarious. So hilarious. So without spoiling anything for you, if you haven't seen it and you're going to go watch it, you're going to go watch it. You're going to you're going to watch it. But if you haven't seen it yet, season 2 speaking of cliffhangers during this episode, season 2 ended with maybe I'm prone to hyperbole, okay? 
I'm not rational about this show. I get it. But the season two cliffhanger was maybe the best cliffhanger in TV history. Okay? Maybe the best. And then we had to wait two plus years to get the show back and find out what happened after the cliffhanger. Let me tell you something, y'all. This cliffhanger created so many ripples in so many characters' storylines. Okay? There's so many good characters. On, there's pro- it's probably an ensemble cast of like 15 or 20. And we care about all of them. They're all hilarious. right? It feels like the people who make this show have spent every second since the last episode aired. And when they made the, the first episode of season three, they've spent every second making this show as hilarious and uncomfortable as possible. It was such a success. It, it's the kind of cliffhanger where most shows hit you with that cliffhanger, and then when they come back, we're somewhere else. We're somewhere else completely. They'll fill in some gaps as to how we got to this new spot. Not Succession. Succession said, that ended at 5.55 p.m., we're taking you to 5.56 p.m. We're going to let you know what happened right after that moment. And they give it to you for a good solid 15 minutes of what do we do next? Every single character. Can I catch my breath? Who am I going to tell what to do next? What do we do next? How do we do it? Do we stay here? Do we go? I don't know. Just, it's, so good. I watched it a little late last night. I'm surprised my neighbors weren't banging on these doors from all the laughing. <sighs> Can I hit you with some quotes? There's a, there's a thing in the show in season two where someone screws up. And they go, well, someone says, well, it wasn't that bad. And, and another person says, well, I'd give it a B plus. For bad plus terrible. <laughs> I'm going to start saying that to some of my friends because it's, it's too funny a joke to just stay in that TV show. That's got to go out into the world. It's got to get out into the world. Okay, Bad plus terrible is that man's performance. Now, I'm, I, I know I'm running around all over the place because I'm a little too excited to talk about this show. I've been trying to figure out how to explain to people that they need to watch it, right? And, and I talk about Game of Thrones a fair bit. Succession has a Game of Thrones moment. If you're a Game of Thrones watcher, you know season one, right in the middle of season one of Game of Thrones, they do something in that, sh- that series that lets you know anything could happen. Don't assume you know anything about what we're doing on this show because anything can happen. That's what Game of Thrones did. Succession did the same thing. Season one, I think it's episode six, they do something you could not have predicted and it changes the way you view the show forever, right? That's why. If you've watched one episode or two episodes, get back to it, watch them over again, push through to the middle of the season, and you'll be a fan forever. It is a bit vulgar. If you don't like the vulgarities, it may be not for you, right? But if you can handle some adult talk, some vulgarities, uh, some crass language and ideas, you'll love this show, right? So you've got that. You've got a show where you cannot find... Remember I said there's about 15, 20 characters, regulars, right? You cannot find one character on this show that you like as a person. None of them. None of them are likable. (laughs) And not likable from a, that's my favorite character like. Likable from, oh, these are some, these are some shitty people. These are some terrible, (laughs) terrible, no good people. All of them. All of them. There's not one, not one you like. Uh, Yet somehow, they've created a show with all these people you don't like that still has 
some heartbreaking moments. Some moments where you're like, oh man, I really feel bad for this dude. Really, I really feel, I feel badly that that happened to that character. I don't like him. Don't like him a bit. But I feel bad. And I think that's a testament to how good the script is in this show. Anyway, uh, you're destined to hear more about Succession (laughs) on some of these episodes as I move through the season. So uh, it's an HBO show. If you got Crave, you could catch it on Crave, whatever, find it. You got an Android box. If you got an Android box, I know you can find Succession. Start watching Succession. You're going to love it. And once again, thank you very much for joining me on It's In The Details. As always, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment, wherever you get the show. See you in a week, y'all. Peace. Peace.